This is Roger with Crosscut in Tucson, Arizona. We're selling this truck as a 2017 Ford F-150. Obviously, it's a regular cab. It's a long bed. It's got a 3.5 liter V6 motor. It's two-wheel drive. It's an XL trim level. But this XL comes with power windows, power door locks, and cruise uh, control, and I believe it's got tilt, which we will check on in just a second when we get it and drive it. Um, it was a fleet lease return that we purchased on a green light, meaning they guaranteed it uh, mechanically, uh, or they'll take it back when they sold it to us, which is pretty rare. Um, fleet vehicles, though, however, have a great reputation. Obviously, fleet accounts, they take care of their own vehicles really well. This was clearly the boss man's vehicle because most white work trucks have a dent. <laughs> this one has a little door scratch on it, I saw, and that's about it. So I think this was really well taken care of. Um, it had a star in the windshield on the passenger side, and it's such a nice truck. We were going to sell it with it, but we decided to put a new windshield in it anyway. So we put a windshield in it and sent it to detail, and here it is. Um, great little truck. I will walk around. I will point at stuff I see cosmetically that you might want to look at closer in the photo gallery, um, but there's not much. Um, it's got this. Looks like they pushed something with a black bumper. By the way, those black bumpers are almost free if you care. They're all over the place. You get them aftermarket and everything. I wouldn't do anything. It's a work truck. But uh, but they're not very expensive if you care. Um, got a little, little rub right here. Right? Let's see. A couple rock chips here. A little baby scratch here. Um, it's pretty hard to be critical here. There's not much going on that's wrong. But... Uh, my job in these videos is to uh, tell you what's up. Tires look like they're, they're probably, I would say somewhere around 30, 30 to 50% tread. Um, they're really inexpensive tire sizes though. So, you know, and you don't have to buy the best tires when you're buying a truck like this. So you're probably looking at five or $600 of discount tires on the truck if you care. But I don't think you need them now. I think you probably have another five or 10,000 miles left in them um again this is kind of an unusual work truck usually you'll see a we have a white silverado a 2019 in our inventory work truck and it's pretty straight but it's got a nice little dent on one side um this one man um there you go a little you know the tailgate uh this was definitely the boss man so because uh it's just it's too straight too straight too clean look at the bed um, it's got a nice bed liner in it that looks like they didn't need a bed liner because it doesn't look like they used it. <laughs> uh, pretty damn straight. Is there a little, eh, little tiny scratch right here? I mean, when I'm looking at baby scratches on work trucks, you're probably looking at a pretty nice little truck, which you are. Where did I see a scratch? Oh, I see it right here. here anyway that's that well you know what i got a key in my pocket so let's uh make sure that the uh locked unlocked key let's see we'll lock it there's locked and we'll put it back in the keyhole and we'll unlock it with the key i always like to make sure that all this stuff works and show you so that you don't have that concern all right, 104,290 miles on it. Fire it up. Yes, the vehicle is on and the doors are ajar. So there you go. All right, let me show you some paperwork before we continue. This is the invoice. You'll see all this stuff will be linked in our ad. Here's the uh, Tony's Auto Glass for the windshield. $235, which is ridiculous. A year ago, we could buy a windshield for 130 bucks. Anyway, it's got a new windshield. This is Mannheim Market Report. We ran this 12, 15, and 22 about a half hour ago. There's your VIN. We put that in, put in the miles. Comes up with an adjusted Mannheim Market Report of 13.3, uh, adjusted range of 11.5 to 15.1. That's what dealers are paying at auction. This will be linked in there. You'll be able to look it through. Uh, they come up with an estimated retail value of 19.8. That's what they would put it on their property for. We're not going to be anywhere near that. Um, Kelly Blue Book XL long bed, 104,000 miles, 3.5 liter, two wheel drive, 
Uh, Blue Book is 18135 with a range of 15.3 to 19.5. Here's a uh, uh, car gurus, we just ran a couple of those, found some similar vehicles, similar miles. Um, done today, that's the date. Um, b -b 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 Ashland, Virginia, they had one with, what is it, how many miles? 107,000, almost the same exact miles. White long bed, 18.3 is considered fair. Then we have another one in, let's see, where is that thing? I think this was in Missouri. I don't know why this blurred it out right here. Oh, there it is, Missouri. Yeah, 104,500 miles in Missouri, uh, 17. Uh, for 16,000, that was considered a great deal. There's your mileage there also. Um, when we bought it, we bought it green light, means mechanically guaranteed, element fleet services, okay? Here's the uh, auto check, this is the vehicle history. I uh, ran this a couple days ago, the day I bought it. Um, 92 is its auto check score right in the middle uh, no major title brands no accidents reported no damage reported no odometer issues um, fleet management corporation in Nevada blah 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 looks like it was in California I think this was just the uh, California California the Vegas this looks like it was a uh, it was the uh, big boss man's driver from California, Nevada, etc. Uh, he clearly didn't do a lot of work in it. Because <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it cosmetically, really. I wish I wish some of the BMWs we had were as in good a shape as this is cosmetically. Which tells you that he wasn't doing a whole lot of work. He was doing the boss man thing. There's your Ford stamp here on the fender. See, it's original. Here's your motor. I like to linger it here as much as possible. There's the stickers where they belong. There's your Ford stamp right there where it belongs. Super clean truck. Super, super clean truck. And then it's also got power windows and door locks, which is really rare in a XL work truck. There's your door locks. Seats are in great shape. This is his elbow. This is how much time he spent here. He just kind of leaned here and probably talked to his troops out the window of the truck. Got some tow accessories there. Cup holder there. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but it does have a backup camera also, which is another thing that's unusual in a work truck. Probably part of their fleet requirements. For insurance anyway there's the wood mirror out in down up other side out in up and down let's see window up and down down and up i mean other side down and up door locks okay got tilt wheel so you do have tilt okay let's see Windshield wipers, seats in excellent condition. The heater works because it's freaking cold, man. I got my beanie on and a jacket and my shorts, but it's not that cold. We are in Tucson, but uh, it's a little, it's a little chilly. A little chilly. All right, let's see. Let's get this coming out here because I need a little bit more heat than that. All right, there we go. Perfect. Uh, that's nice and warm. Heater, I can officially tell you, works fine. I will demo the air conditioning very briefly because, okay, it works. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, it works. Turn everything off. Yikes. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got going on here. All right, so you got your usual radio stuff. Little Tim McGraw. There's your, uh, so it says tow haul right here. I'm hitting this button here. Then it goes to sport, and then it goes back to normal, okay? Then you got this stuff. Fuel history, fuel economy, trip stuff, trip, compass. Let's see what else is there. That's about it there. And here we've got uh, uh, 
there's cruise control right there on and off on and off okay let's see what else we got going on in here there it is hmm I found something broken so this doesn't work for this but this one does so if you're sitting here just reach over this guy <laughs> all right I think that's it let me uh see if I can get us to open the gate here I forgot my remote on the table hopefully I can make make this work and I did I found the pressure sensor we moved it and now it's you have to drive around to find the pressure sensor to open the gate all right if you come here to Tucson and drive this home this is what you'll pay you'll pay your state tax rate whatever that is plus our city tax of 2.7 percent and a 250 dollars dock fee very simple if you pay by wire and ship this truck out of state all you're going to pay is agreed upon price and that's it no tax no dock fee uh, once we receive full payment we'll fill out the title with your name or your company's name and address we will sign it off to you, we'll scan it in your online file, and we will mail it to you. We even scan in the envelope we mail it in, okay? So you'll be able to see everything up front. Um, <coughs> you will have the truck shipped to you. Um, the title will already be in your mailbox. <coughs> when the shipper shows up, just take the title you already have and the truck that you just got. And, and, um, God, that was a close one, huh? That guy almost hit me out of that turn there. It's turning right and thought I was going to turn right when I wasn't. And uh, huh, we almost lost a F-150. <laughs> anyway, um, if you need help with shipping, let me know early in the transaction. I'd be happy to, uh, to uh, help you, okay? Um, I can do it for you. We can roll the price of the shipping into the price of the vehicle. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're able to do it yourself, that's fine. We just had a customer who did a great job doing his own shipping on a vehicle he just bought yesterday. So, <clears throat> you know, usually people have a little bit of trouble with that. But if you know how to do it and you don't need help, go for it. If you do need help, let us know at the time of transaction. And I will get it done and we'll roll the price of the shipping into the price of the vehicle. And that'll be that. Okay. Uh, deposits $500. Once we have a deposit, we have a deal. Until then, it will stay for sale. So please make sure you get your deposit in. Okay. Um... Last part of every video, I say this every single time, on every single vehicle, nothing ever doesn't hear this, okay? We don't have salesmen, so when you buy a vehicle from us, you're not paying uh, a commission. That was another, everyone's like uh, trying to get run over today. This guy runs a stop sign too. Um, anyway, we don't, we don't have salesmen to pay commissions, so you're saving money on not having to pay for salesmen. We don't have a person serving lattes and, 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 you know, scones and sandwiches like they have a Precision Toyota down the street from us. Um, we don't have fancy uh, fountains. They have that at Click Dodge. We uh, don't have a big wall that you could drive your Land Rover up. That's at, uh, at uh, the Lexus uh, Land Rover dealer down the street from us. Um, they have to pay for all that crap, which means you have to pay for it because they don't want to, okay? So they just charge you a lot of money for their vehicle and uh, you pay for that stuff. You also pay for future repairs. They know because they drilled you um, when they sold it to you that if you come in and something's broken, they'd better fix it, right? Well, we don't charge you for all that stuff so that you can afford to fix your own vehicle. If you wanna add $2,500 to the price of this truck and you want us to warranty it for a year, I'm good with that. <laughs> That's basically what they're doing by charging you way too much money, all right? Um, this truck is awesome. I just uh, got on I-10 here. I'll get off here in a second. Our videos can be 17 minutes and 38 seconds long, which is a really arbitrary number. But uh, we noticed that years ago that that's what YouTube gave us, which I, I'm not really sure how that number came to be. But at 17 minutes and 38 seconds, I will be gone. So uh, my brothers asked me to take them on, the, uh, on I-10 now, if I can, or on this frontage road next to us. Uh, and so I am. So that's why we're here. Anyway, uh, very nice ride, nothing going on here at all. Um, but we have to tell people, the day you buy this vehicle, you're the owner. We are not fixing this vehicle. We're not spending a dime. We're not giving you a check. If the radio decides to take a crap or the backup camera decides to take a pack, uh, crap or whatever, you're fixing it. You just save thousands and thousands of dollars buying from us, okay? Don't be greedy. Okay, fix your car, whatever little problem it has. As long as you keep it out of a lake or keep it out of the rear end of a semi, 
um, and change the fluid once in a while. It's a Ford. You don't have to do it all the time. Maybe once every 10,000 miles, <laughs> you'll be fine, you know? Um, but, you know, uh, the bottom line is we're not fixing your truck, whether it's day one or day 5,000. We're not doing any check riding for any reason at all. Um, if we did, we'd have to charge you more money, okay? So it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, this one's a no-brainer. Obviously well taken care of. Obviously it wasn't a real worker bees truck because real workers get scratches and there's paint and there's all kinds of stuff all over the truck. This one doesn't have any of that stuff. It has an elbow pad, <laughs> a blemish, and that's about it. <laughs> uh, really nice truck. It says here, last 30 minutes, 16.6 .6 average miles per gallon, and I'm not even paying attention to my driving, so I would say that, as far as fuel is concerned, so I would say that it probably gets a lot better fuel economy if you're not me driving it. I'm not worried about mashing the gas pedal. In fact, I want to so you guys can see it drive. Nice truck. Lots of snow on those mountains right there, right behind the top of that range right there. About an hour from where we are, you can drive up there and go snow skiing. There's about five feet of snow right there. Believe it or not, you got palm trees and mesquite trees, and right over there, up on Mount Lemon, you can go skiing. Just a little something uh, people know. I think it's the southernmost skiing in the United States would be here in Tucson. So, mountain's about 11,000 feet high. When you go up to Summer Haven on Mount Lemon, um, it's probably, it's almost at the very top. So you're probably at about 10.5 and uh, really, really cold. Lots of snow. And that road up there is sketchy. So if you ever go up there and it's snow season, you gotta bring a four by four. In fact, they won't let you up there with that one. Which is odd, right? Because you got this beautiful sunny day. It's probably, our high today is only like 65, but anyway. That's enough about Tucson. 17 minutes and 14 seconds into this video. Um, the only thing I didn't demo for you guys was the uh, backup camera. I'm going to see if I can stop really quick at this light and throw it in reverse so you can see it. Hopefully no one gets pissed. All right. Reverse. Boom. There it is. All right. There you go. Anyway, I think I'm just about out of time.